Hi, in this narrated PowerPoint I'm going to talk a little bit about plot, one of the more important elements of fiction. Plot is the author's arrangement of incidents in the story, basically how an author organizes the events of the story. It's the things that happen in the story and how the tension builds throughout the story. So typically, a plot starts with an exposition. The exposition introduces us to the characters of the story, the setting of the story, maybe even introduces us to some of the conflict that's going to happen in the story. After the exposition, when we get to know what's going to be in the story, we have a rising action. The rising action is when the conflict intensifies. There could be several events that happen that makes the conflict more intense, and usually the rising action sort of builds to an ultimate point which we call the climax of the story. The climax is the most exciting part of the story. That's where events are at their, their peak, the highest moment of tension. Um, and then after the climax, we have a falling action uh, and ultimately a denouement or a resolution to the story. Um, if you think of most stories, they follow the same uh, plot arrangement. For instance, if we think of Cinderella, which I think most people have seen, we have an exposition. In the exposition, we meet Cinderella, we meet the evil stepmother, we meet the sisters. Right? Um, we get to know what Cinderella's life is like, how she has to do chores all the time. Uh, the rising action of the story is when Cinderella, um, uh, their stepsisters, and the stepmother are, are mean to Cinderella. Uh, we learn of a ball that's happening at a castle in Prince Charming. Um, we we see Cinderella get locked away so that she can't go to the ball. Um, the fairy godmother appears. She makes Cinderella a new dress, pumpkin into a carriage, turns the mice into horses. She goes to the ball, meets Prince Charming, dances with Prince Charming, has a really fun time. And then all of a sudden the clock starts to strike and Cinderella realizes that it's midnight and all of a sudden she has to rush out. So she runs away and loses her glass slipper, gets in the carriage, pulls away. Here we have the climax of the story. And then the pumpkin, everybody's chasing Cinderella, and then uh, the carriage turns back into a pumpkin and she goes back into her rags. Um, the, the falling action is that the, the days that follow. Uh, we learn that Prince Charming's actually looking for Cinderella. Um, and then the denouement, or the ending, is she finds, he finds Cinderella, um, tries on the glass slipper, realizes that she's the love of his life, they get married, and everybody lives happily ever after. Um, so that one follows the traditional arrangement, and most stories, actually, if you think about them, and most movies, too, follow the same traditional plot arrangement. Um, so one of the central features of the plot is the conflict. Uh, all good stories have some kind of a conflict, and the conflict is usually uh, a tension between the protagonist. The protagonist is the central character of the story. Uh, in our Cinderella example, the protagonist is Cinderella. She's the character who we sympathize with, who we relate with. Um, sometimes it's ambiguous who's the protagonist um, and who's the antagonist. The antagonist is the character, object, or force that opposes the protagonist. In our Cinderella example, the antagonist is obviously the wicked stepmother and the sisters. However, Cinderella also has an antagonist in time when she's trying to get away from the ball and get back to her house before midnight. Um, so those are the forces that oppose the protagonist. That's what you want to look for when you're studying plot, is where's the conflict coming from? Who's the central character of the story? Who's the antagonist that opposes that central character? And how is that conflict playing out in the story? In Cinderella, we see that conflict increase up to the moment where Cinderella, you know, meets the fairy godmother and gets to go to the ball. The mother's, uh, the stepmother locks her away in the uh, attic and, um, uh, the conflict increases between them. Climax of the story, we already talked a little bit about the highest point of tension. In this case, when Cinderella is trying to escape, right, and the guards are chasing her and she's running away. This is the moment of, of high energy in the story. Um, uh, and that's why we call it, you know, the climax, the highest point of the story. Identifying the climax is really important because it often tells you a little bit about the theme, which we're going to talk more about next week. The theme is the central point or lesson of the story, and it's typically related to the climax. Um, in the case of Cinderella, the climax is uh, right after she meets the prince and she's trying to escape. Um, and so we know that uh, 
meeting the prince is one of the really important parts of this story. And it actually ends up being what the story is all about in the end, because she gets married to the prince and lives happily ever after. So the climax often tells us a little bit about the relationship in the story. Um, so it's important to be able to identify that. And then the denouement, French for untying the knot. Uh, that's the very end, wraps it up, wraps up all the loose ends. Everybody lives happily ever after. Many stories end that way. Um, so there you have it, some of the elements of plot. Um, so when you're reading your short stories, be on the lookout for those elements and see if the uh, stories follow this traditional plot arrangement of exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, denouement. I think you'll find that most of them do. However, we are going to read a few stories that defy this, and many authors do try to defy this traditional plot structure on purpose. Um, so have fun reading your stories.